Well, good evening. Once again, it's late in the movie land for Surreal Cinema Night. And you know, I find the more of these things you have, the more surreal it starts to get. But I swear to God, 18 or 19 of these babies, <laughs> you're really spinning. I bring up alcoholism for a reason. Oh yeah. You see, tonight's movie is a cautionary tale about the evils of drugs. And though we at Condensed Classics, or at least me at Condensed Classics, have never been shy about advocating the use of alcohol as a vehicle for which to forget one's problems, drugs are another thing entirely. That is why we present to you in dead seriousness the terrifying 1936 informational film, Reefer Madness. <laughs> Parents, if you have teenagers in the house, get them now. Sit them down in front of the television. Give them some hot black coffee and force them to watch Reefer Madness. Only then will they understand the evil road, the use of Mary Jane, will lead them down. Only then will they realize that the cool kids aren't the ones who smoke Maui Wowie. It's the kids who say no and get high on life. Yeah, I may sound real Squaresville right now, but better to be a square than a pear. While I don't believe that last sentence meant anything whatsoever, I do believe this. Oh, that's good stuff. If you smoke the wacky weed, you'll turn into a deranged monster with no ambition other than to beat, rape, kill, steal, defile, and laugh maniacally while playing the piano really fast. Is that what you want out of life? I hope not, kids. God, I hope not. You have so much going for you that you don't need to waste away as some kind of addict bowing to the god of the stoned temple. And again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have absolutely nothing going for you, in which case, please, by all means, light up, get high, and wander in front of a car which is exactly what happens when you mess with the demon seed. Okay, sermon over, out. I think you know where I stand and how proud, how very, very proud I am, to presenting not only a film, mm, oh God, but a warning to youth, which is still as powerful and effective today as it was 36 years ago, reefer madness. If this one doesn't scare you away from the horrors of drug-crazed abandon, then truly, dear viewer, I don't know what will. See you in a bit. Hey, I'm Dave Shaw. Welcome back to Hogsback Falls, where we're shooting Bob TV. You know, I, uh, I had a special time on this, this rock. I made out with my first girlfriend here. Good times. Good memories. Anyway, our next uh, song is by a guy who used to be a wild party and now he's a DJ on Toronto radio, but no, why the hell not? He's good for a CanCon point. Tim Mitchell, I'm a wild party, Bob TV. Oh, Jane, darling, you're back. Guess I won't be needing these. Uh, Dave, I was just wondering, uh, do you know how the brain that wouldn't die came to be? Why, yes, I do, Jane. Would you like to help me tell the world all about it? I sure would. Fantastic. Now as a public service to our viewers who actually care about this trivial crap, we present information for viewers who actually care about this trivial crap. Our story starts with the brain that wouldn't die director Joe Green on an innocent vacation in that godless hell known as New Zealand. One tragic sheep shearing accident later and Joe was left without a left thumb. Luckily, both Joe and the left thumb were taken to a nearby hospital. The thumb was placed upright in a jar of peanut butter to preserve both its position and freshness. When Joe awoke... In a weakened and semi-demented state due to a massive blood loss. Right. An idea came to him. A scientist's fiance loses her thumb and he trolls street trash looking for the perfect thumb to replace it. Realizing the next morning when some semblance of sanity returned to his addled mind that thumbs weren't inherently cinematic and that in fact this idea was so boring it would probably put people to sleep after they were dead, Joe decided to change the thumb to a head. He also added a monster in the closet. History was made. Now what this monster struggling with coming out of the closet represented about Joe's personality and indeed the sheep he had been sharing, we will probably never know. Uh, but we do know the world would be a much emptier place without that tragic accident that caused, or rather, the tragic accident that is the brain that wouldn't die. Back to it. We'll see you in a bit. Hey, I'm Dave Shaw. Welcome back to Bob TV. You know, our next video was originally called Pyrokinetic Electro-Industrial Trial Research Engineering Technician, as in, na 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 my baby is a Pyrokinetic Electro-Industrial Trial Research Engineering Technician. However, cooler heads prevailed and it was decided that it might be better, more sexy, if she were a centerfold. Who can tell what might have been? 
$100 fine, kids, for bad jokes. All right. Bob TV on the new RO. Take it away. Jay Giles Band, center pole.